Shalom friends, this is Daniel and Deborah with Revelation to the Nations, and this is from the nations, this episode, as we are traveling currently on a ministry trip, and we are in the United States. Today, we happen to be in the Lone Star State, and we're almost in the middle of the Lone Star State in Midland, Texas, henceforth Midland, Texas, and we're with a couple of delightful people that are elders of a wonderful Messianic congregation here in the middle of Texas, and it's called Beit Hederic, and we have known them for several years, and they are just incredible Gentiles who have grasped the wonderful concept of Jewish roots. And so today we are interviewing Daryl and Nelda Reagan. And so we want to just say shalom from Israel and so glad you're on our program. Shalom. shalom. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad to, uh, glad to be here. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, I guess the first thing that our audience would probably be interested in knowing is you guys are Gentiles. Okay. So Jewish roots is something that I'm sure you probably were not familiar with for the majority of your lives. Tell us how you came to be exposed to Jewish roots and what got you into this messianic movement. You're right. We, we're Gentiles. We're not Jewish. We didn't know much about Judaism. And <clears throat> for me, it came, um, I was, I've read the Bible through several times, like a book. And um, at one, one time I was reading in the, uh, through the year, through, read the Bible in a year, Bible. And um, in the New Testament portion, I read where Yeshua said, <clears throat> it is written. And he gave a, a scripture. <clears throat> and I remembered, hey, I just read that the other day in the Old Testament portion. And... Um, it got me thinking, and I went back and, and uh, realized, first of all, the importance of Shabbat and how um, it's supposed to be set apart. And we got to watching the, the local uh, TV channel, uh, God's Learning Channel, and uh, at that time they were having um, speakers who were interested in Hebrew roots and... Uh, <clears throat> we began to learn from them and we began to uh, uh, study more of, of the um, Torah, um, the uh, first five books of the Bible. And as we studied and read, we just, we just realized that we hadn't learned everything we should have learned while we were in the church. Mm-hmm. And, uh, How did that make you feel? Here you are, you're convicted, dedicated, sincere believers, and you want to honor God and do what he feels he's called you to do, and you get exposed to all this information that you never heard in the church before. So how did that make you feel? <laughs> it, um, it didn't feel very good at all. Mm. We began to uh, hunt for other people who, who were learning this and, and um, wanted to study um, the Hebrew roots, the Jewish roots, actually. Um, and uh, we got together with some folks and, and uh, we had a Messianic rabbi come down and, and <clears throat> just kind of try to find out how many people were interested in, in having a congregation and met with them and um, one thing led to another wow. yeah and we um it turned out that um the rabbi was also had his own congregation in santa fe and so um a rio rancho actual actually and he would come to Beit Hader or wow. to us one week and then he would go. From Rio Rancho? Wow. Yes. Yes. For those of you who don't know, That's Rio Rancho is over near Albuquerque, New Mexico, yeah. and it's only about a 
six or seven hour drive. Yeah. What a sacrifice. Wow. Yes. Wow. yes. Wow. And he turned out to be friends with um, the pastor who had Mission Dorado, which is a Baptist church. And they agreed to, uh, they welcomed us and we began to have Shabbat services over there at their church. Wow. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice. your initial worship services were inside a Christian church? Yes. Yes. And they welcomed us. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Wow. And yeah. actually, when the rabbi stopped, uh, it, it was becoming impossible for him to do both. And when he stopped, we kept growing. So um, at, we started out with 12. And then, Great uh, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the next thing we knew that we were still growing and God was still sending. And mm -hmm. every step of the way that we needed a speaker or we needed whatever we needed, it seemed like God had it already mm -hmm. yeah. coming. Planned out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, so and just, we, oh, go yeah. ahead. No, I was going to say we were there for five years. Wow. And we told them, they were sad to see us go. Because mm. the pastor said that in those five years, they were able to burn their mortgage. And what he felt blessing. like because no. they were blessing us, right? We God was blessing Amen. them. Yeah. Okay. That's a yeah. picture yeah. of, because yeah. you guys understand about being grafted into Israel, that's, we're part of Israel, not mm -hmm. naturally Jewish born. Daniel is, not me, not you two, but we're grafted in. Mm -hmm. And when we start doing things that are pro-Israel, and the recognition of our role as non-Jews, mm -hmm. then God starts blessing. And, the, and anybody that helps us also gets blessed. It's we, we don't necessarily include in that mortgage burning, <laughs> uh, as far as that's concerned, but in this particular case, it seems to have accomplished that as well. So, so well, honey, why don't you yeah, ask that? Why do you also? both feel that Israel is so important and um, well, and that would be, why is Israel important for both Jewish and non-Jewish, Jew Gentile believers? Why? What do you think? Well, the Jewish people are God's chosen people. They were when he chose them, they still are. Amen. And um, our uh, rabbi, Yeshua, is Jewish. That's right. He's still Jewish. <laughs> will be. And will, and will be when <laughs> he returns. When he comes back. Amen. That's and, right. And uh, we, we just feel like um, it's necessary to understand the, the context that the, uh, the New Testament, we, we need to understand the context of the way the people were when it, when it was being lived, and um, you know what they understood and knew. Actually, and, before it was being written, because the New Testament was a reflection of what right. had been taking place. Exactly. Yes. So therefore, they were living Many years, what ended yeah. up being testified about. Yes. Right. Amen. Correct. Yes. Okay. So, what is your view? Because you know. How important it, we know how important Israel is, but our audience wants to hear from you guys. Why is Israel so important as far as God's plan is concerned? Well, for uh, for me, I just feel that that's where He's going to set His foot. <laughs> and, Good point. Uh, yeah. And um, over and over and over, even in the Brit Hadashah, which is the New Testament, it's constant that um, He is. Israel is his beloved, mm -hmm. right. and his beloved is his. And uh, whether you're adopted in, or whether you're a natural born with Jew blood running through your veins or not, it's still we're we're all together. Right. We're worshiping the same in the same way. In the church, we we did it a different way. We did it a Roman way, and you have to come out of that too. Amen. It's interesting, speaking of the church, what is it that you feel, as far as Gentile perspective is concerned, what is it that the overall Gentile Christian body is really missing 
now that you've had so many years of experience in a Messianic Jewish roots congregation and lifestyle, what is it that you think the church and Christians in general are really missing that you could inform them about to help them maybe grow more hungry for the things that you guys have come to learn? In the um, Christian church, we were, we were admonished to stay out of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we have learned is that the Old Testament uh, is rich. The Tanakh, the, the, uh, mm -hmm. all of that is, is rich. And the things in the Tanakh um, are lived out in the New Testament, mm -hmm. which is what the yes. church wanted, wants wants us to study. Well, but you got to you, you got to study where it came from. Right. And um, God's plan was was in place from the very beginning. You, you start with Bereshit, with Genesis, and and uh, you know he's been he's been here all along. Right. And he didn't just show up uh, you know, when when Matthew was written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and here's my my question to the church, and it was ours as we exit were <laughs> exited the church, is that where in the word did God change his word? Yes. And uh -huh. the thing is that um, the, the Genesis fulfills revelation. Uh, it, it's very plain. He, in the beginning was the word, and the word was him. So how can you take out, um, how can you take out that white sh sheet? Yeah. You have to. Yeah. The dividing sheet has to go in the middle between the two testaments. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 By the Lord, do not change. Well, and I, I'm sure you guys feel this way, the same way we do, and the way most um, people who get into Jewish roots, who come out of Christianity they begin to realize that you really cannot even understand what's called the New Testament without what's called the Old Testament, exactly. without the Jewish scriptures, because it's all Jewish. It's all exactly. Jewish. That's we right. were leaders in the church, and uh, we, we only took what we were told, you know? Yes. So when this began, it was, it was like we couldn't get enough of it. We couldn't stay out of it because we kept seeing things that it was like we had the half of the story and now we have the whole story mm. and uh, we challenge people to um, to just look take go to the word exactly. it was nothing none of it was done away with so go back to the word and um, this is the most exciting journey we've ever been on mm. you were saying that this yeah. morning yeah, yeah it really is and we, uh, we were not trained at all to grow a congregation, and, um, but God just kept sending the right people and- uh, To help you. Yes, mm -hmm. and so we were able to purchase property, build a building, mm -hmm. and all of it. You have your own- We do. You have your own place now. Yes. It's yes. awesome. Yes. Indeed, uh, Beta Derek, the, the building, the congregation, the ark, um, everything that they have there is, is just wonderful. And um, we've been there several times, and uh, it's, it's really incredible to see the worship uh, that goes on there. And uh, so it's a wonderful experience uh, for them and for anyone who attends. Uh, but I find it quite interesting and it always amazes me when I come across Gentile Christians who grew up in the church and discover Jewish roots because, as you have said, it's a journey that if you're really hungry, it really never ends. It never, ends. never ends. That's right. You know, whereas in the church, it seems to be almost singularly focused on personal salvation and then beyond that, there's just sort of a myriad of testimonies that get told about how these personal salvations take place. Whereas if you're following 
authentic Jewish roots, you are digging into the word and you are getting into the multiple layers of what the word means right. because he, the Hebrew alphabet is multiple layered. The Torah is multiple layered. And so you have opportunities to hear all kinds of viewpoints about it, which can so enrich you. You know, has that been your experience? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Don't you feel like you just love God and love the Messiah Yeshua more oh. than you ever thought was possible? Oh, yes. yes. And the Holy like Spirit that. is just as real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even more so, it yes. seems like. But, um, mm. but yeah. Yeah, we went. I went to Israel and with a group from Beit Haderet, and uh, the Jewish people would say, "There's something different about y'all." Well, it's because we we found our root. That's I mean, right. We, your roots. we discovered yeah. our root. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you you heard Nelda speaking authentic Texan a moment ago. <laughs> y'all. The word y'all. Okay, so that is a word. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It yep. may not be spoken where you are watching from, but it is spoken here. Okay. Yeah, and you keep picking it up, and then I start picking it up. We start talking like them all Texans, you know. Right. Right. Well, how important? We've talked about this a lot in the years that we've known you. How important do you feel it is for the Christians to support the Jewish believers who are persecuted in Israel? Actually, some of them are persecuted here by the church, but sadly. But how about how about in Israel? How important is it? Oh, <clears throat> there's um, a scripture that says. Um, I will bless those who bless Israel, and I will curse those who curse Israel. And God never changes. That scripture still remains the same. And it's, um, he hasn't abandoned the, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people. Um, the land flourishes when the Jewish people are there, and it becomes a, a wilderness when they're not there. And um, it is so important to us to uh, because we, you know we're blessing God's people or we're blessing God. That's right. And uh, Beit Derek itself is a, is a witness to that. God, um, if God gets all the glory for everything that happens at Beit Derek, we wouldn't we wouldn't have been able to get the land we got. We wouldn't have been able to build the building we've got. Um, the you know through through even the trials that we've been through which make us stronger um, you know it's always it's always been God has been the the, uh, the most important aspect and um, we get blessed for blessing Israel and our our congregation tithes to uh, Jewish organizations that uh, supply uh, food and medical equipment and clothes to anyone in, in Israel. But there's also an organization we, we contribute to that just takes care of the messianics in Israel because they are the single most, in, yes. most persecuted group of people in the world because not only do the Jewish people not accept them because they think they're Christians, and the Christian people don't accept them because they think they're Jewish. Yeah. They're too Jewish. They're Judaizers. That's they're what they Judaizers. Call them. Yeah. Well, that was one of the problems uh, Shaul or Paul faced. Yes, it okay. Was. The Gentiles thought he was too Jewish, and the Jews thought he was too Christian. Yeah. So, yeah. poor guy suffered through seven trials <laughs> in his lifetime because he was such a Erudite, they didn't really yeah. understand them. Very but you said something very significant, Daryl, and I want to point that out to our, our audience. What he said is something we shouldn't just listen to casually. He said that when you are blessing God's people, you are blessing God. Mm -hmm. And I think that is very telling and very meaningful because if our God still exists, and if his plan is going to be fulfilled, then we, as believers, both Jew and Gentile, need to understand who God's people 
always have been, are, and always will be, and that is the Jewish people, especially those in the land of Israel. And so by blessing them in the land of Israel, as you say, you are literally blessing God and putting a smile on his face. Amen. We yeah. believe that. So the whole concept of the persecuted believers, which is something that I'm not quite sure how much our audience knows, but these days is not very unlike it was in the days when Jesus Yeshua was here. If you think about it, the Jewish believers are persecuted today just like they were persecuted in the days of Jesus Yeshua. So our program, as you know, Revelation of the Nations, is designed to give the Messianic body in Israel a voice out to the nations and create a bridge between the nations and Israel because they're persecuted and they don't have a voice. So what are your thoughts about Revelation of the Nations and what our ministry is doing? Well, <laughs> well, if you're looking for a place to, um, to give, to support, Revelation to the Nations is absolutely what you need to be giving to and you need to be supporting because they are really, they have really touched um, a nerve where nobody else has. Um, there's all kinds of organizations out there that are supporting Israel, praise God, yes. but not overlooking or walking, looking away from those that are really has surrendered all and it has cost them dearly. Yes. Some have been forsaken by their families. Yes. And indeed. so I think what I see y'all doing is is something that nobody else is doing. And when the word gets completely out, you know, in Israel, oh my goodness, I think that we're on the we're just we're on the ground floor with y'all, but y'all are <laughs> you're way up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, it's kind of you to say, um, and uh, we feel as though that um, wherever you are, uh, you can only go up from that starting point. And when we think in terms of going up, we are thinking in terms of making Aliyah. And when you make Aliyah, you do go up. Just like in Israel, you go up to Jerusalem from wherever you are, whether you're coming from the north or the south. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I make a mistake and I say, I'm going down to Jerusalem today because we live in the north of the country. And that's not right. You're always going up. Because it's a spiritual ascension. That's where indeed, indeed. going up physically represents something spiritual. We're ascending spiritually to God when we go up to Jerusalem or when we go up to Israel, we're, we're going up spiritually. So, Nelda brought up a very important point as we draw to a close here in a moment, but it is, it is important for uh, anyone watching that you may be connected with an organization or a congregation or know of an organization or congregation that says, oh yeah, we're blessing Israel. We send lots and lots of money and we go over there all the time and, and what have you. Well, you may not know this, but 99% of the organizations that are blessing Israel that are connected with most churches are not blessing the believers in Israel. They're not blessing the household of faith. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing, but it's important to know that they are pretty much blessing the traditional normative Jews as opposed to the household of faith. So if you're watching this and you know of someone or your congregation is blessing Israel, find out exactly who it is they are blessing. And if they're not blessing someone who's blessing the household of faith, which is what we're doing with Revelation to the Nations, pray about that. Because after all, we want to see 144,000 Jews in Israel get down on their knees and cry out, Baruch Habab Shem Adonai, which in English is, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And guess what's going to happen? So that's what we're focused on with Bless Israel Network. And we are so delighted that we have the opportunity to speak with you guys today. Thank you. Yes, indeed. And we are delighted. 
to be among your supporters as a congregation. Beit Haderet uh, financially supports you guys to us. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's not much help, but it is a little. But all those little ones add up to be one big one. So right. that's so. God, and God keeps multiplying it, which is yes. wonderful. So it is a blessing grateful. to us. We're we grateful you guys for every penny much. we get. Right, and we thank you so much for loving us, supporting us, and putting us up this wonderful oh, place yeah. we're at this weekend. Uh, we can't even describe it to you, it's so unique, but uh, the fact is that we're in a wonderful uh, ranch house uh, doing this interview, and we're about an hour away from the congregation, so we got a little bit of a schlep, as my late <laughs> grandfather used to say, but we're so delighted that we had the chance to come and meet with y'all, and uh, we're looking forward to... See, uh, you're doing that Texan thing again. <laughs> I sure am, I sure am. So we're looking forward to uh, more years of our relationship. Amen. So are we. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I'd like to P.S. this. Um, we are outside the camera is our other elder, Delbert and oh, Susan yeah. Dick, that honestly and truly we couldn't have gone through the things we've gone through without them. And we're blessed by them. And uh, Gabe Mata is now the third elder. So oh, wow. we're yeah. wonderful. So we've got a good, Amen. Good team. Amen. So we want to make sure that we're aware of Susan and Delbert Dick, uh, having been with them for a long time, and also the new elders, which has just uh, come into the that Mata position. family. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, exactly. And I know, I know their daughter uh, very well, or getting to know her better, and so mm -hmm. I'm just delighted that you, uh, that the Lord chose them. Yes. Really delighted. Amen. Yeah. Well, You're all a good team. <laughs> yeah, indeed. We're going to see some fire coming yeah. out. <laughs> so this is Daniel and Devorah with Revelation of the Nations from the Nations. Today interviewing Daryl and Nelda Reagan from Beit Haderic in Midland, Texas. And if you're all, if y'all, oh, I should say it the right way, if y'all are anywhere nearby mm -hmm. Midland, please come. I'm sure they would love yes. to have you at Beit yes. Haderic. Midland, Texas. Yes. In the middle of oil country. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hustling right now. Yeah, it is hustling. Yeah, it's, it's boom or bust, and right now it's, it's B-O-O-M <laughs> time, okay? Yep. So, That's all right. Well, bless you all. Shabbat shalom Shabbat since shalom. this is Friday. And so we thank you again for watching Revelation to the Nations from the Nations.